there's that upcoming card in BC. You're in BC. Yeah. You're from BC. So how come you didn't, did you get an invite at all? Or was there anything? Oh. Nope. Um, I, uh, I think a lot of these shows kind of get uh, thrown off a little bit because it's hard for me to get a matchup, right? And so when you look at the record of the guys who are fighting on the card, like there's one guy who's probably three or four and oh, like a local guy. And then there, you're probably going to get a guy who's two and seven, one and eight. And the commission won't allow me to get fights like that. Um, you know, like usually most of my opponents have to have 10 wins and up uh, at least. And so uh, I think it just kind of throws them off a little bit because, I mean, if you look at the rest of Canada, there's only a few guys who can fight me. And uh, these shows, uh, so, like, I'm never the problem when it comes to contract negotiation. I always just say, yes, like, whatever you can do. You know what I mean? Uh, but, unfortunately, a lot of guys aren't like that. And so I think uh, them finding me an opponent would be a very difficult challenge, right? So... And you said that you would, uh, when you and me talked, you said uh, Tim Chimelli as a, as yeah. a possible opponent, you said you fight him for free. Uh, yeah. Any any info on a possible future fight with him? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of funny that he spoke up. Um, you know, I signed off the social media for a bit, which I like to do from time to time. I think it's good, but uh, before I did, he had put a post saying, like, you know, like, let's get a tournament going. Like, why not get all these heavyweights, uh, um, you know, to sign up and do, like, a round robin thing, figure out the top five guys, the top six, I guess, uh, stands out now, unfortunately, with health issues. I was actually looking forward to that fight with him and Simon. But, uh, you know, Camelli stepped up and said he wants to fight, and that's a guy who I don't think would hold out for a lot of cash. Um, you know, his record, if it's combined with his MMA fights, they'll probably pass it. I think he's got like 20 some uh, or, or so uh, MMA fights. And so they would probably pass that fight. So if somebody wants to have that card, uh, you know, I would love to, I'd love to fight Tim, right? I think that would be a great fight. I think he's, uh, you know, kind of like standing your ground, uh, uh, trade him kind of a guy, which works great for me. And, uh, I think uh, that would be uh, that would be an exciting fight for the fans because uh, you know a lot of these cards like you know they're putting on fights that you know like yeah you got to build your fighters and you got to get the right fights at the right times and stuff but you know, like fans aren't stupid they also want to see a challenge right and so you know I think with Tim like he looks the part he's got the fight experience you know he's he's been in there with other big guys. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think that'd be a great, uh, a great fight for uh, the fans of BC if somebody wants to put us on a card. And if you were to get a fight with Tim, what version of him would you expect to see in the ring? Because the first time he fought with Stan, he, he stopped Stan. And the, in the second fight, it was, a, it was a stinker, right? Uh, there wasn't much action. And uh, what, which version would you expect of him to show up for a fight with you? It's funny you ask that because by the time I was going to start learning how to box and move, right? Because, you know, if you want to stand and trade with me, I'm a bigger man, I'm a stronger man, I punch harder. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, uh, I think I'm tougher too, and I'm in better shape. So uh, if he was smart, he would probably get down to about 220 and just try to box and move 215 and uh, just try to stay away from me as best he could and outbox me, know whether or not he could do it. And, uh, you know, whether or not he resorts back to his kind of like brawling technique is uh, is a different story when, uh, when the leather starts to fly. But uh, I think, uh, you know, he would, uh, he would be wise to try to uh, outbox me. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with that either. I could box actually a lot better than people think, I think. And uh, another fighter that you called out for years was uh, Dylan Carmen. So I remember not too long after he returned to the ring and he fought Paul, you were calling out Carmen shortly after. That fight never happened. What happened there? Um, so we were we were in talks, and then uh, 
Uh, we, we had a plan possibly to fight either on the Baxter start. He was looking to do a show out here in Vancouver as well. I think everything's kind of up in the air because I don't think those guys can like leave their house or travel that much. And then, uh, you know, I was talking a little bit about maybe happening in Quebec. And I think uh, best case scenario is, you know, I'd get a fight with Tim, get a fight with uh, Dylan on the same part of Simon. And then, uh, you know, and he would, well, it would have been great if he fought Stan. And the winner of those two fights could have fought each other, you know, for a Canadian title. Because I think it'd be deserving at that point, you know, the top four guys. Uh, go in there and, and fight and figure out who's number one. And then, then to me, that belt would actually mean something. It wouldn't be, you know, a paper champion. You would be the legit number one guy in the country. And so, you know, that was how I would like to see it go. Uh, that fight didn't happen more. So just because of all these lockdowns, uh, I think there are some promoters. I don't know how the Tiger. They would love to put it on, they said. And uh, they obviously want to see the rematch with Simon as well and uh and uh, you know people people pay attention when the heavyweights get in the mix i mean they'll we're kind of having fun talking trash i think i usually win most of the exchanges and uh uh you know i'm always up for a good trash talking session online but uh but yeah i think it's just more so the the circumstances which uh uh made it so the fight uh, didn't happen because people did want to put it on he was willing to fight me for sure i talked to him and uh, I just said, hey, man, you open your mouth. I said, you know, I can hold you to it, right? And he said, no, no, I'll fight you. And I just said, okay. And I said, uh, good to know. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was more so just circumstances. Okay. Now, Dylan, he's fought Keen, what, twice now, right? Yeah. So if they were to fight for a third time, how do you think yeah. that would go? Uh, I think uh, – you know, it's 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 heavyweight boxing, so you never really know. Um, I think Simon and Dylan have both seen their best days. Uh, uh, I think Simon uh, trains a little bit more seriously. I think it's like his primary uh, source of income, so I think he takes a little bit more seriously, uh, like kind of year-round type of thing. I know Dylan sometimes balloons up and is in and out of the gym, and for that fight, um, you know, if they were both training year-round, they are both staying active, both staying in shape, I would probably go with Dylan. But since uh, Simon, I think, uh, stays a little bit more disciplined in his training and, uh, and you know, Quebec's such a, a fight uh, province, uh, fight town, whatever you want to call it, uh, that people really get behind and they support their fighters and allows their guys to kind of extend their career to where, you know, you start hitting your mid third of like, hey, you're a professional boxer and uh, make no money or, you know, like have a job, you have kids, and you have to start to make all those kinds of sacrifices. And so in Quebec, though, um, you know, they have specific gyms just for their guys. Their coaches are very involved. It's a total industry out there. And uh, there's always barring, and there's always – uh, a reason to be in the gym. So I would have to give it to Simon just based kind of on that fact. And prior to COVID closing everything down, you were scheduled to fight Stan. Now, when when that got postponed and and he had signed to fight Keen, were you disappointed or were you more interested in seeing how that was going to play out? Always disappointed when guys can fight, and I don't, you know what I mean. But uh, you know, they, they, I'm sure they would have uh, liked to see me fight Simon. But um, you know, I'm in one of those situations like where I have a little bit of time. I would like to build that fight uh, a little bit better. You know, I'd like to fight on the same card. I would like to kind of do it the same way as we're doing it before. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think if my mindset is right and I'm in the gym training the way I need to be, I can take a fight like that on short notice. I can take that fight without having a warm-up fight. And uh, I think I'll pull them out of the water, uh, you know, based on the fact that, you know, I'm not the same guy I was a few years ago. And, uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to get an opportunity to have a warm-up fight. So, like I said, the best-case scenario, Tim, Dylan, you know, that Simon type of thing. But uh, I think I'm just going to get a phone call and, uh, you 
know, be three weeks out and jump into a fight with them, to be all honest with you. So if we get sparring back and, uh, you know, we're allowed to train without masks on and all this other crazy stuff that's going on, you know, I can definitely see that fight happening this year. So, yeah. Now, uh, during COVID, I mean, th there's been very limited opportunities to fight. Have you been offered anything? Uh, and if so, what what was the offer like? Who was it against? Uh, they offered, I, I had tons of offers, uh, short notice to fight, you know, like pretty serious young prospects, right? And uh, I'm not a fighter who fights for a living, so I'm not going to take stupid fights, you know, I'm not going to. I don't need 15 grand to go fly to England and fight Daniel Dubois, you know what I mean? On like two weeks notice type of thing, right? So a lot of these guys who make a living uh, just fighting, they put themselves in those bad situations. Sometimes they come out on top, but a lot of the times, you know, it's, uh, it's in the A-side's favor. And, uh, you know, I'm not in a rush to go out there and get hurt or, uh, you know, take a loss where I don't need to because there's not a guy on the planet I wouldn't really fight. Um, you know, coming off of a perfect scenario, you know, I'm like 10 fight in the streak, I'm super active, I'm in the gym all the time, then yeah, I will step up and go fight those guys. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to take it just for uh, just for a paycheck, so I just don't think it's worth it, really. And if you had your choice, your first fight back, who would it be against? I would love to fight that Tim Kamali. And so, you know, I think uh, I think that's a great fight. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it, it leads towards my favor. And so it'd be nice to uh, to get some of the ring rust off and, uh, you know, shake this layoff and uh, go in there and mix it up with a guy who actually wants to fight where I get some rounds probably and, uh, you know, get some experience from a guy, you know, who's, who's willing to come fight. And uh, so with COVID, your training is limited. What are you doing with your time aside from work? Uh, so I built a gym in my backyard. Uh, I live out in the middle of the woods, middle of a national park. And so I stay active year round um, when the shutdowns happen. So like we haven't had the same sort of shutdowns that you guys have in Alberta. We just have stricter rules. Um, you know, I'm on an island. And so uh, they just kind of limit our travel uh, to the mainland sometimes. They'll cut off all the ferries and uh, our, numbers, our numbers will go down quite quickly. We're still allowed in the gyms. We're still allowed to train. We're just not allowed to do like hand pads. We're just not allowed to do like group work or sparring or anything like that, um, which uh, is a big part of boxing. And you can see in a lot of these fights that are happening, uh, how rusty guys are, their distance, their timing and everything is a little bit screwed up because they have been getting the same work in. So, you know, physically I'm getting a lot of the same work in, you know, mentally not as much, right. We're not traveling around and sparring. We're not, you know, uh, uh, building off of certain sessions and drilling with guys. Um, you know, I'm still, uh, uh, considered a pro. So they let me, uh, do pads with my coach, which is to me the most important thing. Uh, sorry, they're low battery. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Low battery. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I still feel like um, we're getting enough work in compared. Like I talked to guys in Toronto and the guys like I haven't stepped foot in the gym and you know since the shutdown, since the lockdown, and he's having to run stairs in his apartment building to get exercise. Right. So I'm not in that situation. Uh, I've been good. I've been in the gym consistently. Uh, you know, five six days a week, always. Uh, you know, in the boxing gym always a couple days a week and uh you know i'm staying pretty sharp and i'm learning some new skills and i'm getting better and better so you know i i'll be ready i'll be ready when the time comes do you think the time off due to the pandemic has done more better for you uh boxing wise or has it done more harm i think it's done more harm you know uh, i wasn't uh, I wasn't getting a lot of fights and I wasn't uh, super active in uh, um, the year leading up to it just because of, you know, like just a couple of management issues, a couple of fight issues. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I was kind of stalled at that point anyway. 
but uh, I think it's definitely hurt me because, you know, like it's now I don't have uh, as good a chance and my chances were already kind of limited before anyway. So, yeah, it's just made things a little bit more difficult. And, uh, you know, I'll be I'll be ready for it. And uh, when the time comes, it, it, you know, like everybody's kind of suffering right now. And I'm just lucky that it's not my only uh, source of revenue. And if things keep going the same way they are, say like if things don't get better pandemic wise, how long yeah. do you see yourself continuing on before you decide, you know what, screw it, you know, uh, uh, time isn't slowing down. So I get older, how much yeah. longer you think you'll stick around in the sport, depending on how things go in the pandemic? Yes. Yeah. You know, I feel great. I love training. I love being in the gym. I love fighting. Uh, I still feel, you know, probably better than I did, uh, you know, when I was, you know, 10 years ago, to be honest with you, I feel great. Um, I'm having fun still with it, you know, so for me to like say I would leave the sport, it would have to be because I'm choosing between, you know, work or an opportunity where I couldn't train those nights or, or something, because I have no real, thought of like just being like you know what I'm done and uh, you know you, you go through that sometimes you get frustrated and at what's going on and you start to think that you're not going to be able to fight but uh you know for me I work best when I balance you know my life with boxing and so I think for me it's a great outlet I kind of have to do it to stay sane um and uh you know I think uh I'll keep doing it as long as you know, as long as I can, right? Unless something comes in the way of, you know, me uh, being able to train as much as I want, then, you know, I'll just keep doing it.